What's going on everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers are in the market for a center and they have been active in trying to just do the due diligence to try to find a center. But being honest, I don't think anything happens anytime soon. Um, I still think Valanchunas is probably the most likely uh, that the Lakers end up landing as a center, but it's good to see that the Lakers are at least touching base with teams, at least doing their due diligence, kind of gauging and seeing, putting it out there like, hey, we need a center. So teams, when they're like, okay, we're ready to pull the trigger or lower our asking price or, you know, hey, we know the Lakers are willing to give up a first for this guy, so let's do it, right? Kind of get the dialogue out there, get the discussion going, kind of figure out and hope that one of these teams bite sooner rather than later, right? But more likely than not, you're probably looking... Closer to trade deadline, you know, best case scenario, probably early to mid-December, but chances are it's probably going to be late December, early January, if not going into the actual trade deadline in early February. But nonetheless, I've talked about several teams, uh, including the Charlotte Hornets, right? And they have two centers that I really liked in Mark Williams, as well as Nick Richards, two guys that I thought could really come in and make an impact. But there's another team out there that has two centers, that make a lot of sense for the Lakers. One, I don't really see them training. The other one, I do potentially, right? And that is the Brooklyn Nets. And their two centers are De'Ron Sharp and you have Nick Claxton. Nick Claxton is the guy that I really want. Nick Claxton is the guy that would be great. Um, he's the guy that, you know, he has, he's still young. He's 25 years old. Um, so he's a guy that has the youth still to be not only a piece for now, but a piece for the future. Um, he's a guy, you know, 6'11", can block shots, can rebound, do a little bit of everything. All right, Nick Claxton would be a very welcomed acquisition. So, like, just looking at his stats, last season played 71 games, which also, by the way, he played 71 games, 76 games the last two years, which is a good sign. Uh, played in 30 minutes in both of those games. Um, but... He was a guy last year, gave you 12 points, uh, 10 rebounds, two and a half uh, assists, um, be nice and stay a steal, round it up to a steal, and then 2.1 blocks per game. Um, and then, again, this is a guy that has good size, good length, um, good versatility. Now, he's not this, like, huge bruiser-type center, right? He's 6'11", he's 200 and, like, 20 pounds so he's not he, he's more of like your Derek Lively type than he is the the you know bane with Jokic and stuff down on the block but he is a guy that makes a ton of sense alongside Anthony Davis that you slot in and you don't really have that like bruiser bruiser you don't really have like Ivaka Zubat isn't available right like you don't have that guy that you can just throw out there to bane with the big fellas right you're looking at Kind of just like, you know, Clint Cabela's of the world, the, the you know, Nick Claxton's of the world. Uh, Walker Kessler I still is still my favorite option, is still my favorite target. I would love if we just got news tomorrow that the Lakers ended up landing um, uh, Walker Kessler. But they also want a bunch of first. However, again, with the Brooklyn Nets, I do not believe that they will trade Nick Claxton. Not unless it's like something crazy. Like if the Lakers were willing to give up both first and a bunch of stuff, then maybe. Um, but Dayron Sharp, he's a guy that they may be willing to trade. He's a guy that they may be willing to unload. Um, and he's 22 years old, so he's still, again, another guy that's very young. Um, he is problem, right? And this is kind of the issue both ways, right? So... As far as Dayron goes, he is 6'9", 265. The 265, chef kiss. It's what we need. The 6'9", not so much, right? Like, we need, like, a 7'7", 265 guy. It's either 7'7", 220, or, like, 6'9", <laughs> you know, 270, right? Like, so, but... He does have the lower center of gravity. He does have the, the ability that we need as far as um, being able to bang with the big boys, again, 22 years old. So he's still lots of room for growth and, and potential upside. Um, last season, played 61 games, 15 minutes a game, uh, in which he averaged seven points, uh, six rebounds, uh, one point, one and a half assists, half a steal, 
and a block. We'll be nice rounded up to a block. Um, again, and this is in half the time. But this is a guy that can rebound, uh, defend, block shots as well. Um, he's got a little size on him, which would be good again, slaughter alongside Anthony Davis. He's also a guy that I do believe could be available. Obviously, it depends on the price. It depends on, you know, do you, I, you're not giving up a first for Dayron Sharp. I like Dayron Sharp. I think that there's some real potential there. I think there's some real upside there with him. But he's also a project. He's st still obviously a big. And if you're going to have to give up a first or a two first, I then go get Walker Kessler at that point, right? If it's something that's more valuable. Now, if you could get Dayron Sharp as an add-on, right? If you could get him uh, in an exchange for a Cam Johnson or Dorian Finney-Smith, or both. Like, what if the Lakers could get uh, Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, and uh, De'Ron Sharp? Now, whoo! Now you're talking, you got your two, three, and D guys, and you got your center. That'd be massive, right? You could literally have your starting five be, uh, like, Reeves, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, Cam Johnson, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis with, like, De'Ron Sharp, Max Christie, Dalton Connect, uh, it's all coming off the bench. Be great. And De'Ron Sharp is dirt cheap contract wise. He is another one that is under five million. Now, when you look at De'Ron Sharp and his uh, contract, he's due roughly four million. Remember, Lakers got to send out more money, so you're gonna have to clear four, maybe five million in salary to go get him. That's why I'd like to. I'd like him to be an add-on rather than you know, go in and put like so say. The Nets want both first from the Lakers, right? Again, if you get like Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, and De'Ron Sharp for like both first, maybe like a pick swap or whatever, let's go. Make it happen. Let's go win an NBA championship. Um, so if you could do something like that, now we're talking. Um, but De'Ron Sharp being roughly $4 million, uh, he is uh, on a club option, team option, and he will be a restricted free agent next season. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But I don't think teams are going to be lining up to throw a bunch of money at him. And if the Lakers were to acquire him, I'm pretty sure he would be like, all right, hey, let me stick around. Give me a new contract. All right? Probably do like the Max Christie thing where it's just like, hey, let's get it done. Let's get it over with before we run the risk of free agency within reason, within frame. But it'd probably be something like what Matt Christie got, you know, $8 million a year for like three years or something like that. Now he comes in, got that nice contract, and we're off to the races. But if um, you look at, say, Nick Claxton, right, which, again, if you can get Nick Claxton, go get Nick Claxton. I would prefer Nick Claxton, absolutely. But one, we don't even know if he's available, two, Probably a hefty, hefty asking price. So he is just getting into his new contract in which this season, uh, with his new contract, he makes $28.5 million this year. Remember, you got to send out more money. So it's really $28.5 million. We'll call it $29 million to be safe. But first year of that $29 million. Then he goes to uh, 26, 23, and 21, which is great because his contract drops two million each year so in his final year that'd be 21 million and he'd only be 28 years old so it's one of those things where his contract sucks to trade for now you know like it's one of those things where you wish you could get in at the 21 million and then pay him 28 this season and then you know climb up but fortunately it doesn't work that way uh so that's the problem is you have to shovel out basically thirty million just to go get Nick Claxton. Where for Dayron Sharp, you don't you only have to give up four million, and now you're you're in a good shape, right? Again, I'd rather get Kessler for that price, but it's an option there because this is what the Lakers need, right? They need somebody that can come in and make an impact now, ideally long term upside and potential, which both Claxton and Sharp give you that, but. When you're talking Claxton, or when you're talking Sharp, right? He's a guy 22, got time for growth, development, all that stuff. Um, gives you kind of what you need, and he's kind of that big body um, that you want to kind of be able to bang with the big boys, right? You're only looking for him to play 20 minutes a game anyway, which is what he's playing. Give you, you know, eight and eight in that time. Give you a block, block and a half, um, especially playing alongside guys like Anthony Davis stuff. Probably, uh, maybe even improve and be even better, but. Nonetheless, right, like you're looking for that kind of chop blocking, versatile big man that can start in a pinch behind uh, Anthony Davis and play alongside Anthony Davis and step up on any given night for Anthony Davis. Uh, but to me, if you could get other pieces, 
right? Again, Claxton would be great, but his thirty million, it's just like, and you're starting him at that. You're paying him that much money. You're gonna have to start him, right? So if I'm the Lakers, I would prefer to to go get that th- the three and D wings. Go get Dorian Finney-Smith. Go get a um, uh, uh, Cam Johnson, and then add in a Dayron Sharp into the mix. And now you're cooking. And I might even do like a video breakdown at some point in particular just about that type of trade because I do think that's a really good trade. You know, I like I talked about I wouldn't give up both first for Walker Kessler. And it's not because I don't – but we need more than just Kessler. If the Lakers were a Kessler away from championship, go get Walker Kessler. Go get him right now, bring him in, and let's go. Let's go win a championship. But that's not – right? They need Walker Kessler and – right? They need Walker Kessler and – a you know Cam Johnson or Walker Kessler and a Bruce Brown or Walker Kessler and a Jeremy Grant. They need Walker Kessler and not just Walker Kessler. So to me, if you could kind of solve all your issues, then I'd give up two second or two first, which I do think through the Nets you could solve both of your issues because you get Dorian Finney-Smith, who gives you six seven six eight size that can be a three and D guy. Slot in at the two, give you some size there, especially at the two. Go Cam Johnson, play the three of the four, give you good size, three and D shooting, all that stuff. LeBron James, Anthony Davis with Austin Reeves, like, let's go. Now you're cooking. Now you're talking. And then Daron Sharp off the bench, now you're talking. Now I would give up both first because I just think at that point it's worth it. At that point, it's just like now you got two three and D guys to pair with Reeves, LeBron, and AD. And you got that center for now in the future. And you still got all your young guys, all your key guys. Like, you're in good shape. right? Like, And to go get those guys, you don't even have to sell the farm, really, right? Because Cam Johnson makes, what, $23 million, I believe? Uh, and then Dorian Finney-Smith is like 14 and some change. Let's just call it 15, right? So let's call, let's call it, say, 24. Because remember, Lakers got to send out more salary than they take back. So let's say $25 million for Cam Johnson. Just to be safe, say fifteen million for uh, Dorian Finney-Smith. Again, just to be safe, it's, I know it's like fourteen point nine, but let's say that. And then Dayron Sharp is a little over four million, but let's say five million. So you're talking, let's say forty-five million in salary that you need to trade. Well, between Rui and D'Angelo Russell, that's thirty-five million. So you only need to clear another ten. You give up Gabe Vincent. You could do it clean three for three swap, right? Like there you go, and then. Now you're in good shape, and now you cleared salary, and you could maybe maybe even throw in like a you know Maxwell Lewis or something, right? To to kind of give them incentivize that now you can bring in uh, a Quincy, right? Like or bring in another piece, another player that you need gives you some options, give you some potential flexibility. So to go get those three guys, salary wise, wouldn't cost you anything. You could literally do a three for three swap. Right, which, you know, a lot of like Jeremy Grant, you got to just like a three for one swap. I right? like things like that. So if you could get three guys and bring them in, now you're in good shape. Now you're talking. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you like the idea of going and getting Dayron Sharp? How do you prefer Nick Claxton? Do you think, like, I prefer Nick Claxton, but for being honest, Nick Claxton isn't going to be available, which is kind of how I feel. Um, you know, again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me not. me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.